All right, folks, time for another homebrew review. Now, this one I've been saving for a little bit of time. Uh, it's probably been about the best part of a year, probably about 10 months or so. Um, it is, it's what I'm quite excited about. Hey, you can see that crazy Russian RIS, Russian Imperial Stout. Um, drink in 2017 but it's 13 percent and it's from frank's homebrew at 77. i've been holding on to this one for quite some time so it's time to drink it now i am a bit of a heathen because i haven't got a stout glass so i'm putting it in something similar but obviously it's got it's ribbed for my pleasure um it's yeah it's an ipa glass but it should be in a stout glass anyway um not too highly carved, I hope, but let's crack it. Yeah, just a little hiss there. I'm going to try and go for an aggressive pour. Dark. I can hear it. I mean, it's it's carbonated for sure. Um, the the bottle that came it came in a, a pet bottle. It was it wasn't too squidgy, but it was you know it wasn't too hard at the same time. That's what she said. Um, but yeah, it looks really nice. Really, really dark. I mean, so dark that you probably could shine a torch and it wouldn't come out through the other side. You probably wouldn't even see anything on the edges. Um, small um, head on this one again it could be the glass so but it's, it's a lovely tan colour um, I'm going to go for a nose on this one yeah not, nice roasty notes on it smells strong um, you know, you can smell that there's a little, little bit of an alcohol note to it, but it's not like a barrel aged or something like that. But you know, you're not just drinking a dry state, a regular dry state. Suppose I get a little bit of chocolate on that, but yeah, it's mainly quite roasty. Maybe a little bit of coffee on that. Pretty much what you would expect from an imperial state. Um, nigh on a pint of this on a school night yeah why not um so yeah i'm gonna get cracking on this one so cheers frank I thought I was going to cut it then, but um, anyway, this is um, not yeah. There's there's a little bit of alcohol to it, definitely. It's warming, um, but it's not like OTT. I'm getting I cut out. Um, I'm also getting quite a, like a, a almost like a soy sauce kind of note to it, where it's you know it's not it's not too sweet. This one it's not cloying. It's not um. You know, it's not lactose or anything like that in this one. It's, you know, it's a straightforward imperial state, but there's a little bit of a sort of a molasses y kind of licorice note to it. Relatively full mouthfeel. It's not thick, but um, yeah, you know that you're, you're not going to be drinking this like, say, a black IPA or, you know, and any of the other. You know, dark beers like a porter is, is you definitely know it's a, it's an imperial stain. I'm going to sit back and um, enjoy this one, but thank you very much, Frank, for this one. I probably should have shared this with, with uh, somebody else, like my brother in law or someone like that. 
but uh, yeah, it's really nice Imperial Stout. Um, I'm glad I've hung on to it for so long. I think it's kind of probably mellowed out compared to some of the reviews I saw a little while ago. It was still young, um, and I'm sure you know it would continue to improve with age. But this is a uh, this is nice. It's almost like a slightly tannic sort of red wine note to it as well. Don't know what hops you used in it. Be interested to know. I'm not picking up a huge amount of hop character, but there is something. Just lingering there in the background. I think that probably is the hop that was used. But I couldn't tell you what it was. Because, you know, this isn't this isn't about the hops, this is about you know what the malts bring to the table. So thanks very much, Frank. For that one, it's really much appreciated, mate. I'm going to sit and enjoy and another homebrew review to come very soon. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Follow Frank's Homebrew 77 if you don't already. Like, subscribe, share, etc. Take it easy and I'll speak to you soon.